Hey guys, this is Bob Morelli with the Tuning School, and on this Tech Tuesday, we're going to do an E85 versus Meth Injection Smackdown. All right, so let's start with E85. This is basically going to be an E85 versus methanol injection. What do you want to run? And that depends on a lot of conditions, so we're going to go over these here, starting with E85. So E85 is basically a cheap version of race gas. That's the best way I can describe it. It costs a lot less than race gas. It's just a couple bucks a gallon. Depends on where you're at on the planet, but usually it's just a couple dollars a gallon. Um, it is a high octane. It's usually between 100 and 105 octane, and it just depends on the concentration. Um, and it will allow you to run more boost or spark advance than you would normally be able to run on 93 octane pump gas. So you can take, uh, like our force induction Mustang here, it's a Coyote car with a Vortec. You can take this car, and let's say on pump gas, maybe you're making 550 to the wheels. You could take that exact same combo, don't change a thing, switch over to E85, and then you can pick up a good 25 to 50 or 75 extra horsepower. Now where is that power coming from? That power is coming from the ability to run more spark advance, if the engine needs it, or more boost, which every engine always needs, more boost. So those are some of the, the, the pros, the reasons why you'd want to run E85. Now, uh, one of the drawbacks that comes with the extra power and the E85 is the fact that it does get a lot worse gas mileage. So on average, we see 25 to 35% less gas mileage than you would get with regular pump gas. So if you drive your car a lot, you probably don't want to convert straight over to E85 because at least in our area, it's not 30% cheaper than your regular pump gas is. So you will be spending a lot more, unless you really just don't care about that, in which case you just want the extra power. That's fine too. Another drawback to E85 is that cold starts are usually a lot more difficult. Okay, ethanol burns a lot slower than regular gasoline. So when you try and light it off cold, it doesn't really like it that well. In fact, in some places like Brazil, they have two gas, ta gas tanks in their vehicles usually because they're almost 100% running E85 in Brazil as their fuel. So what they'll do is run a small gas tank, just like a gallon or two, of just gasoline so that when they fire the car up cold, it has a nice cold start, it's no problem, then they'll switch it right over to E85. Um, so also meaning it burns slower, so it will need more spark advance, which means more time for your tuner, which means a little more money out of your pocket. But if you're tuning it, it's really not that bad, it just adds a couple of hours because you're going to have to do some more timing adjustments for idle, part throttle, and full throttle. It will require more spark advance. Another drawback is that it may be hard to find in your area. Uh, here in Tampa, um, we have about four or five gas stations, but I wouldn't plan a road trip on it just yet. It's kind of like driving a Tesla. You're going to want to map out where you're going to make sure you can hit an E85 station. And then also the quality will vary based on where you're at, and, and that will affect the tune. Um, all right, so let's talk about meth injection for a little bit now. Uh, some of the pros to meth injection are that it is very similar to what you get with E85. It is a higher octane. So when you inject methanol straight into the intake charge pipe of a forced induction vehicle, you're literally injecting a fuel that has about 100 octane as its rating, which is a great thing. So you can be running 93 octane pump gas in your vehicle all the time, and then only when you're at full throttle and only when you're at a certain point of boost and higher will it spray that extra methanol injection, which will provide you with a couple advantages, some that you don't get with ethanol. The first being a cooler intake air charge. So the action of directly injecting that into the cold, into the charged air going into your engine will reduce the intake air temperatures, which will allow you to run more timing should it needs it, should it need it, or more um, more boost, which we all know every engine really does need more boost. So you can get similar uh, results with meth injection as E85, but you also don't have to always run it. So when you make your tune for the car, you can make a tune for a car without meth injection. So just tell the guy to keep it off while he's driving around the street. 
and then maybe he's a drag strip guy and he turns it on and he uploads the tune for meth injection and he has that extra 25, 50, or 75 horsepower. So that's one of the pros that meth injection does really give you is that it's on demand kind of thing. And also, you're not constantly using it. So you're not constantly changing that supply out. It's only used when you're at full throttle in boost, which means, in my example, uh, with our Buick Grand National, I would average one to two gallons per week. That's what I would use. Daily driving the Grand National, I would go through a gallon or two per week. I do have kind of a heavy foot, so I am in boost a lot, but that's okay. So between three and five dollars a gallon is what you'll pay for methanol usually, which means that you're gonna pay three to five dollars times two per week, which isn't bad. So that's one of the additional perks of using meth injection. Um, also, the meth may not be quite as readily available as gasoline, but you don't need it as much. So when you do go, you can stock up. You can buy a five gallon pail, you can buy it larger, it depends on your situation and where you're at. Now some of the drawbacks to meth injection, it does have a higher upfront cost than if you were to just run E85. So this is similar to the argument between a supercharger and a nitrous kit, okay? So with meth injection, to buy a good kit, and I would only buy a good kit, and I'll tell you why in a minute you're gonna spend at least 450 bucks. I'm just telling you, it doesn't matter what brand you buy, you're gonna plan on spending that because they have to put good seals in the pumps, they have to put good seals at the joints, the fittings, the plumbing. You need good high quality stuff because I have experienced it. If you don't have good stuff, it will eventually eat away at those points, in which case you'll develop leaks. And that meth doesn't make its way into the charge pipe like you want. It makes its way everywhere else, which is a bad thing. So, uh, as I said, the plumbing can fail with the cheap kit, which is why you don't buy the cheap kits, but you do have a higher upfront cost. Uh, leaks can develop with improper fittings, but with a good kit, it should solve most of that. Now, probably the biggest drawback that you can imagine with a meth kit would be if it fails. If it fails you don't, and you don't catch it, you do have a problem because you can lose something like a piston. You can blow up your motor. You can do that because your tune is set up for meth injection, which means you're running more boost, more spark, which means if the meth doesn't spray like it's supposed to, it will cause detonation. So depends on how deaf you are, really. I've had some customers, they picked up on it immediately and get let off and their engine's fine. Other customers, and you probably know your customers well, they're just going to keep their foot to the floor and then blow their motor up. But the good news is, if you buy a good, high-quality meth injection kit, you don't have so much to worry about because they usually have fail-safes, and they also have alarms. So they'll have lights that'll go off, or, or noises that'll happen, like alarms, noises, bells. So you would know if the pump is not spraying. So that would be the last drawback to meth injection that I can think of. But if you want to know what I would really do, I'd run both. Get the best of both worlds. Thanks for watching.